Earlier, the Desmond Tutu HIV Foundation, in partnership with Advocates for the Prevention of HIV in Africa, hosted a webinar on the topic Coronavirus Outbreak, Updates and Implications. Yvette Rafael from AFA joins us now to talk about this. A very good evening to you. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Yvette. So what were the takeaways, the outcomes of uh, this webinar? Um, I think more than anything, Tepiso, we, we have the facts and we know that Although I don't want to say it, South Africans shouldn't panic. We only have one confirmed case. And it looks like the Department of Health is on top of it. But there are other things that obviously bothers us if this uh, does go big and a lot more people get infected around the issues of high housing and education to our communities. I, we, we do know that some communities in South Africa don't have water. So how do we then mm. tell people, South Africans, to wash your hands 20 times a day? And some people don't even have access to clean sources of water to begin with. And housing, we will realize with this disease that housing is healthcare. So for advocates and activists, this is important for us to highlight just how important it is for the communities to be on top of it and also to be informed. Mm. And when you're talking about houses, I'm also thinking you're talking about the, the, the structures as well because, um, Most I, I mean, historically South Africans have been forced into Black South Africans uh, have been forced into small spaces. And uh, so if somebody is infected and you're all in the small community, confined spaces, I'd imagine then there's a greater risk. Yes, and one of the things that we've learned from this one case is that the, the patient did a self-isolation. Now you tell me, how do you self-isolate in Guguletu or in Alexander? So those are the things we need, some kind of assistance from the government to educate our communities and be... Uh, prepared for bigger uh, quarantine mm. spaces. So when we talk about education, I mean, some of our viewers have been complaining that they actually don't know what to do because there hasn't been a big enough or at least a, a wide enough uh, education program. Are these your findings as well? Yes. Uh, uh, as I walked into the SABC, there was no sign to say how to sanitize your hands, how to keep, uh, you know, keep clean and all of that. So every workspace, every space where there are big people, a lot of people in the, uh, in the area, I think, should, should make plans for that and have signs up on how to literally... Uh, wash your hands and keep mm. tidy. And just talk to me about community outreach programs. How would they work, Yvette? How, in circumstances like this, because there's also a literacy issue. Yes, definitely. I think one of the big things that we have to go to the drawing board is also to simplify the science. So there's all of these big names and languages and, you know, just... Uh, alphabets that's been thrown around, but does that make sense in the communities that we live? So for us as uh, advocates for the prevention of HIV and AIDS is to simplify the science and start having those dialogues in our communities as well as we know like door-to-door uh, -door can happen. So how do we then make use of community health care workers to understand and also transform, uh, transfer the information? Mm. One of the big things is also the health care workers. We'd like to see how they are being trained to prepare the communities where Which they work Which is what in. I was going to ask you. Have you witnessed any of that uh, to date? It, it, do you know whether or not there is in fact a drive and even funding available to train? At the moment, on, on the webinar, uh, the, the Department of Health mentioned that they do have plans to train healthcare workers on diagnostics. And we also know the tests are going to be a problem because uh, not every South African who walks in with, uh, with what they think is symptoms will then be tested immediately. So we have to make sure people do not panic and fill up the already overcrowded and healthcare facilities. And obviously when we talk about healthcare, for some people uh, we also talk about lack of access because of uh, financial constraints. So um, do you think just from your experience of working with communities that somebody would really take it seriously or would think it's probably a flu, I actually can't afford the time off, I'm just going to continue? Yes, and that's the dangers of where we are as South Africa today is that people who in the much lower brackets don't have medical aid, don't have access to, uh, you know, to leave and would rather go to work until they get they, they're very sick and present then uh, mm. already infected. So what are the implications for people with already compromised immune systems? 
I, I, uh, what we've learned also on the on the webinar today was the fact that this virus actually, this disease actually targets older people and it's the older people who are much more at risk. So our communities would have to, you know, go out and, 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 and assist older people with, with this issue. But um, Young people, I don't think we should stress. It's almost, it would almost be like a common, a common flu and you'd recover. One of the big things for advocates for the prevention of HIV and AIDS is the issue around HIV uh, infections. And we know there are a lot of people who don't have access to treatment. And they, that's our biggest worry. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking at uh, uh, some of the, uh, you know, posters that have been put up just in terms of how people can better uh, protect themselves, thoroughly cook meat and eggs, avoid unprotected contact with live, wild or farm animals. I want to talk about particularly at that last one, they avoid unprotected contact with live or farm animals. Rural areas, how do you think this picture is going to play out? Uh, fortunately, or unfor <laughs> fortunately or unfortunately, it's a piece of, we're hoping it doesn't get to that. We know most of our rural communities do not have access to travel outside the country, but if it does get to that, I think we would have a big problem in South mm. Africa because of just where the poverty is in But how country. practical is that telling uh, farming communities not to have uh, contact with? I mean, obviously there's the ne necessary precautions that you take when dealing with animals, but... How possible is it not to have contact with them? Yeah, and, 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 and that's just the thing, is that we should not create all of this panic where we know that some people do not have an, a, an option and really only one dog was effect, infected in, 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 uh, in China with the coronavirus. So, mm. yeah, just for so us the to issue be of careful. animal hosts isn't really a, a, bigger a, problem. a big problem. So I want to talk about people with HIV AIDS effect. How... How more vulnerable are they? I mean, considering the fact that you work with activists for the prevention of HIV in Africa. People with already pre uh, uh, conditions need to be extra careful. People with uh, low CD4 counts, people with detectable viral loads need to be vigilant on, on, on I mean, the, their health and also just start taking their medication and be aware of that. All right, thank you so much for speaking to us, uh, Yvette Rafael from Advocates for the Prevention of HIV in Africa. Aldrich.